Now for this part of the question, we're given this finite region S bounded by the curve C, the line x equals root 3 and the x-axis. And we're told that this area is rotated through 2 pi radians about the x-axis, generating a solid of revolution. And we've got to show that that volume of the solid of revolution is equal to p pi root 3 plus q pi squared, where p and q are constants that we've got to find. So to do something like this, how do we work out that volume? Well, we should be familiar with volumes of revolution. If not, you can always find tutorials on this on my website. But essentially, the volume of revolution about the x-axis is given by pi times the integral of y squared with respect to x, with the limits being x limits. And they will go from naught to root 3 in this particular example. So that's our volume of revolution, how we're going to calculate it. Now if we start to substitute some values in, we've got pi times the integral of y squared. y squared, well that's y is sine theta, so y squared is going to be sine squared theta. And then we've got dx. The problem is we can't integrate this with respect to x. It's a function of theta. We can only integrate this with respect to theta. So how do we get around this problem? Well, we introduce theta here, d theta, but we need to take it back out again. It's as if they cancel, just leaving us with the dx. So it means that I'm going to have to work out what dx by d theta is. So I can do that from our value up here. We know at the moment that x equals tan theta. So we've got x equals tan theta, so we can differentiate that and get dx by d theta. dx by d theta would be sec squared theta. So we can pop that in there, okay, so as sec squared theta. There's also another problem. We're integrating with respect to theta, and our limits up here were with respect to x. We now need to change them as limits with respect to theta. So we can do this because we know that when x is 0, we can find out what the equivalent value of theta would be by putting x equals 0 into here. So we can say that when x equals 0, theta would be the inverse tan of 0. So theta equals the inverse tan of 0, which is 0. We can do the same thing for the upper limit here when x is root 3. When x is root 3, let's put that in there. When x is root 3, we've got root 3 equals tan theta, so therefore theta would be equal to the inverse tan of root 3. And what is the inverse tan of root 3? Well, it's the equivalent of 60 degrees. It's pi upon 3 radians. So we can put pi upon 3 up there as that upper limit. Now, let's substitute for dx by d theta at this stage. Okay, so what are we going to have? We're going to have pi then times the integral from 0 to pi upon 3. We've got sine squared theta multiplied by dx by d theta, which is sec squared theta. Sec squared theta is the same as 1 over cos squared theta, so we can think of this as 1 over cos squared theta there, okay? And it's integrated with respect to theta. Right, so we just need to tidy this up. Let's just bar some areas off, okay? It's going to be a bit cramped here, but if you can uh, live with that, it just saves us scrolling the screen and we can keep it all together then. So we've got the volume, let's come up here, volume okay, equals pi times the integral then from 0 to pi upon 3 of sine squared theta over cos squared theta, which is the equivalent of 
tan squared theta. So we're integrating tan squared theta with respect to theta. Let's shift it over a little bit more. Okay, let's say we've got that volume then equals. Now, how are we going to get to integrate tan squared theta? Well, we should know the identity that 1 plus tan squared theta equals sec squared theta. So we can rearrange that to be pi times the integral of sec squared theta minus 1. And that's all integrated with respect to theta, with limits going from 0 to pi upon 3. Now each of these we can integrate, okay? So we know that the integral of sec squared theta is tan theta. So we've got tan theta there, and the integral of 1 with respect to theta, well that's going to be theta. So we have our limits going from 0 to pi upon 3. Substituting in the usual way, we've got pi then multiplied by, well, substitute pi upon 3 for tan theta, we've got the tan of pi upon 3. Then minus pi upon 3. And then if we substitute 0 in, tan of 0, well I know that's 0, okay, and minus theta, when that's 0, that's going to be 0. So we've got 0 minus 0, so simply 0. I could have left that blank, but we'll just put that in there as a token. What is the tan of pi upon 3? Equivalent of tan of 60 degrees, well that's root 3. So we've got pi multiplied by root 3, and then we've got minus pi upon 3. So how's this looking? Well, we've got to get our answer in this format, so it looks like we need to expand this bracket. So if we expand it, we get pi root 3 minus pi squared root th uh, over 3. So, or third, if you like, pi squared. And you can see this is identical now to the format that we had to show p times pi times root 3 plus q times pi squared, where p clearly is equal to 1, and q is equal to minus a third. So there's our answers, p equals 1, q equals minus a third. It's a bit crammed in, but uh, I uh, hope you can uh, see that though. Okay, it does enable us just to view it all in one screen. Okay, there you go.